So one last thing I want to do before we get into the crescent inlays is I want to fill in this joint with just a little bit of water-based putty. Um, if you're not doing a stained finish, uh, I wouldn't use this. But since I'm staining, it'll color the putty and it, it'll blend in. Uh, what I'm trying to eliminate is just these little bitty micro cracks here, gaps. I want to make it all even and the putty will do that. So um, I'm not wed to any brand of putty. This one happens to be good filler. Uh, I've used Timbermate, I've used different ones and they all seem to work pretty good. Now I added a little water there and got it just slightly runnier than it normally is. And with my finger, I'm going to, I like to uh, try to avoid getting into the um, cavity for the inlay, but it seems like I do get in there from time to time. So I'm working it in as best I can. Now I've got this is a cleanly rinsed, freshly rinsed rag. I don't want to leave any residue out here if I can avoid it. Rubbing it pretty good. Now, this is a very clean wet rag. I'm going to come back again. I'm also going to use just a little bit of that right there and try to get into that crevice and clean up the walls, the exposed walls before it hits the putty so I don't have putty residue on that end grain in there. Now, if there was, it looks like there might be a little putty in there. I like to So now if you get any putty on the uh, spline, I come back with this little toothbrush. It has just a, a few bristles where I can get in close and I take those out. So we're on to the crescent inlays. Now the inlays uh, need to be slightly undersized, the inlaid pieces, the actual pieces that are going into the cavity. Uh, I don't want to have to pound them in. So I made a test board. I have a couple tests to run. The other one we'll get into later. Uh, but for right now, uh, we're just concerned with the fit, how hard it is to pound in. Uh, I ended up at doing an offset of negative three thousandths, point zero zero three. Uh, you're going to have to test to make sure uh, what works. Uh, there are some variables here. You probably won't have exactly the same offset you may. Uh, but I've cut out a cavity exactly the size as it was in the frame itself. And I drilled a little hole. I don't know if you can see that right in the center. So I can take my test piece, pound it in, and I can also poke it back out and try another one. So uh, African blackwood is kind of expensive stuff. So I don't want to use a big piece to make my inlay pieces. So you see I've taken a piece of three quarter by three quarter, eight inches long, and it will cut out 10 pieces here. I will cut out 10, then I'll turn this piece over and cut out the other 10 on the other face. Uh, and I've also joined it to a longer piece this little piece is, going to, is hard to hold in there. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. Um, this is what I came up with now. Um, so, and I've got it double back taped to this larger piece. I'm going to set this down first and set my grid. Okay. Now, this piece, 
is a little wiggly right there, so I'm going to do one more thing. I'm coming back with another piece, and I'm going to capture it in there now that I've got my grid set. see what we've got here. Okay, let's head over to the vise and we'll start shaping these guys, pillowing those tops. In my previous video, I showed how to pillow the uh, crescent inlays, uh, and I've changed it this time. Uh, not by choice, actually. I uh, could not find the needle nose rasp, um, so I ended up trying a different rasp. Later, I found the needle nose rasp in my back pocket. But anyway, I'm using an Ario Thumb Laurel Riffler Rasp, 6 inch grain uh, 14. And there's two ends of this guy. One's a little chunkier. This one's kind of thin. I like that thin one. But before we do that, I'm going to take this center piece out, and this piece that's that gives me more area to work around. So this guy on this side, this pillow is fairly shallow. Now I'm going to come over on this side and I'm going to turn the rasp over. As you can see, it's a very shallow pillow. I'm going to come back now with 220 grit, kind of a circular motion, two fingers here, thumbs between the two thumbs and fingers. I'm looking for scratch marks down in here and here. Looks like I've got them all. Now 320 grit. That's where, yeah, I've got a little bit of a scratch mark right there. Grain is starting to pop now. Okay, now 600. Yep, 
There. Let's take this guy over to the buffing wheel and then we'll saw him off on the bandsaw. Okay. back bevel this guy, uh, we need to determine the depth that we want to make him. We want to, you can see here, this is that other test that I did. I'm, I routed out three holes, uh, one to a depth of 0.215, one at 0.225, one at 0.235. Now the cavity in the frame is 0.188. I want that um, pillow to be proud of the surface. So, um, and I've already tested this, so I know which one it is. It's 0 0.225. So this is, here's how this works. The back is sticking out, small hand plane. So now we'll go back bevel this guy. So you can see I've got this guy held in a pair of forceps. Um, it's really tight quarters. I want to back bevel this leading edge a little bit. We're going to start over here on the uh, disc sander and then we're going to take it over to the spindle sander for that inside curve. So to put this guy in, a little glue in the cavity there. There we have it. 19 more to go.